Hello, my name is Ben Sayer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to move freeform citations into source fields in Reunion for Mac. The first thing that we want to do is back up our family file so that we can avoid any catastrophic loss. And the way that I like to do that is up here on the File menu, click File, Save a Copy. Make sure that you've got Exact Copy selected here. And then Reunion will append the word copy to the end of whatever your current family file name is. And I'm going to accept that default. You can call it whatever you like. And we're going to actually work in this copy that we create until we get everything the way that we want. And then we'll swap them around at the end once we're satisfied that everything is the way that we want it. So I'm going to click Save to create a copy of that family file in the same place that I have the one I'm working on now. And then close this family file and open the copy. Now, you could just work in the one you were in and have the copy there as a backup, but I prefer to work in the copy because when I do that, I'm making sure that everything that I had in there came across right and it looks right. So in this case, all the people and all the events and sources and everything came through. I didn't make a mistake and uh, do a clone copy or something like that. It would be quite a tragedy to think that you had made a, a complete copy of the family file, but you really had only cloned it, so it didn't have any data in it. Now that we have the copy of the family file open, we want to choose a source to work on. So we need to pick a source that has a citation in the freeform text field that we want to move the contents into the source fields. And so we need to bring up a source list. Now you can do that with the command key, command S, or use the sources button on the toolbar, or list sources. For this example, I'm going to use source number 20. So I'll go down here and open that up by double clicking it. And you can see here in the freeform text field that I've got a complete citation. And if we preview it, it looks just fine, just the way that it is. Now I've covered in a previous article why you might not want to use freeform text for citations. And so if you want to make this change, let's go through how to do that. The first thing that you want to check is your source type. Down here, you've got your choices of different source types. And you want to make sure that this is right. If you used the freeform text for the citation, you may um, not have set the source type correctly. This is your chance to change it uh, because selecting a different source type will modify the source fields that are available to you. So in this case, this is a census image online. This is a source type that you may not have. This is one that, that we created in a previous uh, screencast that's based on the Elizabeth Schoen Mills format. So now that we have that selected, we'll want to cut the source information from this freeform text. And yes, cut it, not copy it. Um, the, the kind of general approach we're taking here is to um, take a piece of this at a time out of the freeform text and put it where it belongs. And so we want to cut them. So let's take the name, and I'm going to press Command X to cut that. And I'm going to flip over to the source field. And we'll put that right in the title spot. So I have that title in there. While I'm in here, I'm going to change that case of that word. And then I'll go back into freeform text. And I have some location information. So I'm going to cut that. Here's the locality. And if we look here, we've got population. I'll cut that and stick that in the schedule field. There was no ward listed, so I have ward X in here. And actually, we'll take off the word ward. What we want is the value from that field. The enumeration district was 136. And we'll paste that in. The page was 5B. Now, you notice I'm not 
uh, going over and entering these things in. I'm copying, I'm, I'm cutting and pasting so that I don't make any transcription errors. Dwelling is 89. Family number was also 89. And we've got a person of interest there. We'll paste that in. Okay, so we've pretty much denuded this first line in the freeform text field. And we have some other fields here that we had not populated that we could. But in this case, we're just going to move the things that we have over there. Now, one of the things that I want to show you in here is that there are a couple other lines of information that are in this freeform text. And these are pieces of information that aren't really about the source itself, but about the information in the source. And the information is specific to an individual um, and an event. So actually two individuals and events. So the first one is that John Calvin's birth name, a place was given as New York and his age at his last birthday, birthday was 65. So that's not really information about the source, that's information that's specific to the person and the, and the birth event. And this next one, his mother, Abigail Westover, that her birthplace was given as New York. So that's information about her birth event. And so that doesn't really belong in the source itself, it belongs in the citation detail. So we're going to move that as well. But before we get to that, I want to save what I've done and show you we're back here on this source list with that source selected. And if you go down here to Source Tools and select Show Usage of Source, which is Command U, that will show us all of the records, the people that we're using that source for. Now by changing that source in the one place off the source list, it, it will have changed the source on all of these. Let me show you. We'll pick Delbert Sayer, and sure enough, here's source 20. And when we open that up, we'll see that here is our, here's our denuded freeform text, and here are our source fields all populated. Now right now, the preview is going to look kind of wonky uh, because it's, it's building from the source fields what we wanted. So that all looks beautiful, but then it contains the the notes from the freeform text field. So it has that uh, data that we want to move out of there. But in any case, you can see that uh, one of the people that is using that source, that the source appears changed for that. So let's open up that list of people using source 20. And we're going to want to take them one at a time. We saw John Calvin and Abigail Westover were the people that we had uh, person-specific information in the freeform text field. And so we're going to go to the birth event for John Calvin Sayer. And here we can see the citation. And we'll open that guy up and we'll go into freeform. And we're going to take all of this text that's about him and we're going to cut that right out of there. And then we can save this source. And I'm going to paste it right into the detail, the source detail field. For that person and then click Save. Now we need to get to Abigail Westover and move that person event specific information for her. So in this case I'm just going to click on her card to open it up and we can look in here and see that we're using Source 20 on her birth just like we expected because the information in the freeform text field was referring to her birth. Now that might be a little tricky chasing down exactly where you put that, but it's not something that I can really show you. It's a case-by-case -case basis. If you have questions uh, or want some guidance on that, by all means, uh, leave a comment and and uh, either I or someone else uh, on the Genealogy Tools site and community will answer that for you, make a recommendation. So we've got this source and we want to move the person event specific information about Abigail Westover's birthplace out of the freeform text. I'm going to click Save and I'm going to put it in the source detail just like we did for John Calvin's entry. 
And while we're at this, I'm going to open this source back up and I'm going to clean out this detritus that's left that it was um, meta information about the data that was in the freeform text citation before. So the labels, schedule, enumeration district, page, dwelling, and family. We don't need all of that in there. So I'll clean that up. Now you may be left in some of your citations with information that is not strictly the citation, that doesn't belong in the source fields, and also information that is not person event specific that you've moved out. And they're, they're probably notes. And this is, a, is an okay place to leave that. It's, uh, it's going to show up in your end notes and it, it will be um, exported with a JEDCOM export, but as we saw in the previous screencast, uh, not all genealogy applications treat that the, the right way. So that may not be all that terribly important because it's notes. So now that we have the source fields all populated and the data moved out of the freeform text field, we can look at the preview and we can see that we have a beautifully formed citation that is pretty close to what Elizabeth Schoen Mills calls for and evidence explained. So we'll click Save and we'll save this record. We can see we put the source detail there. We want to make sure we save it. And now if we go back to John Calvin and we create a person report, for instance, something that's going to show a source. I've got sources checked here to include sources. We want to do that because what I want to show you is how that source appears. Now let's have a look at the citation that we just changed. If we look up here at the birth information, we can see that it's using number three and number four in the sources. And four is a tombstone photo was the source, and three is the citation that we just changed. So we can see the text of the citation that was in the preview. And we can also see appended on there is the note that we put in the source detail shows John Calvin's birthplace as New York and age at last birthday as 65. So we can see that we've taken that person event specific information and moved it out of the citation so that if we do the same thing, let's have a look at the, the person sheet for his mother, Abigail Westover, and look at her birth event. That's using number two. We can see that it has that same citation, but it doesn't talk about John Calvin's birthplace and date. It has the cite the citation detail about Abigail Westover. So this is why we wanted to move the person and event specific information out of the source itself and into the citation detail, which is related to the person. So this shows the well-formed citation for Abigail Westover. And in this case, those are the only two people that I had using that source that included person event specific information. You'll want to continue to take those steps until you've moved all of that information into the citation detail fields for each individual. Once you do that, you want to check everything like we just did to make sure that it all looks good. And if you have more of these that you need to do, more um, sources that have full citations in the freeform text field, you can just pull up the source list and move to the next one. And once you're finished and ready to use the file, you've checked everything and it all looks beautiful. Now I'm going to quit reunion and open up that folder where I have the files. So you can see here's the Sayer family copy, the one we were working in, and here's the original. So I'm just going to change the name of this to maybe the um, backup and the date. And then I'll change this name to Sayer Family. And then now when I open this file and navigate to the person of interest, we can see when we look here that we have the version with the cleaned up freeform text and the source fields populated and the citation detail populated if we look at the birth event right there.